Uh, we have a video. Some have asked me, is this the same valve that, I mean, is this a different valve? Is it really a replacement valve? And the answer is, it's the exact same valve that you would get if somebody opened you up surgically and put it in. Really? It is a bovine cow pericardial valve made by the same company, and it's the same valve. And we actually have an animated uh, video, if uh, we want to play it, that really shows the process of uh, how we access the patient. I don't know if you guys can hit the lights a little bit. And even though it's a cartoon, really, I would say it's very accurate. And, and you see, uh, this is a, if you will, an image of the heart beating. And this is the three leaflet aortic valve. And what you'll see is very heavily calcified, thickened, and the leaflet motion is restricted. So it, it basically pitches off the blood flow that's going to the heart. We usually come in from the leg, uh, come from the femoral artery, and put a wire all the way up the aorta, this is retrograde, and place that wire across the aortic valve. We then take a balloon uh, and do what's called a balloon aortic valvuloplasty. We basically crack the valve and loosen it up. Uh, and when we do so, we pace the heart at about 180 beats per minute because you don't want the heart to squeeze normally during that 10 seconds or so. Because if it does, it'll spit the balloon out, just like when we put the valve just like a cork coming out of the top of a bottle. So you want the heart to stand still while you do this. We then put a big sheath in, uh, which in this equipment, this is not for the faint of heart. These are large catheters. This is a serious procedure that has uh, complications associated with it. We lock the stent, as you can see, uh, and the valve is within the stent. And then we cross using the same wire left in place. We again pace the heart at 180 beats per minute and then deploy. And it's really a phenomenal uh, experience to watch this go up. And as you can see, the minute the stent is expanded, the valve begins to work. For those of you who were in the lab last week, watch this. It's truly a, a revolutionary technology. <clears throat> so that's the valve. It's um, uh, held, it was in a stainless steel frame. The newer model has a cobalt chromium metal alloy frame. Uh, and uh, the valve is replaced. What I can say is three to five year follow up in Europe and in Canada, as the technology is already approved for use in those uh, outside the United States, have shown durable function of the valve. This valve continues to work as well as it did when it was deployed. So the outcome looks bright. Another thing that is remarkable outside the United States, not yet done in the United States, is that if this valve or another bioprosthetic valve goes bad, so to speak, my friends in Canada are actually putting this valve inside the old valve. And so much like you can put a coronary stent inside of another coronary stent, we know that works, right? You could actually do valve and valve and so even if your valve wears out, the potential is for it to be re-replaced. Now this is not obviously, I'll preface it, at US FDA approved at this time. Uh, we're planning to venture into that area in the United States in a controlled fashion, but it's already being done outside the United States and really offers a lot of hope uh, alternatively to open heart surgery, repetitive open heart surgery in people that have a bioprosthetic valve. So it's a very exciting next step. Any other questions from the uh, audience? Well, um, I, I want to say thank you for coming, and I can't thank the team at Christ Hospital enough for this um, really monumental collaborative effort. Thank you.